I remember when I was doing, uh, when I wrote this about the Louisville revolutions, I was thinking about all these thoughts before the election last year because there's a governor's race that was happening and that's when the people have power is when we can affect the elections. So those who are running for governor or running for a position in office, they got a bullhorn, they speak loudly. I feel like Curtis Morrison, since he ran in the primaries, he was the most visible member of Occupy. And whether you hated him or loved him, and whether he talked about issues that were relevant that people could get a hold of or was just all over the place is uh, up for debate. Uh, but overall, they knew he was Occupy, and so they might have worked against him. It might have worked for him. I don't know. It was a legitimate movement, but Occupy has not been getting good media coverage. They're making you all look like a bunch of fucking assholes. They're making all of us, I guess, look like assholes. Um, but the bank protest, they only showed, you know, like the parts where, um, you know, the only violent parts, you know, they didn't show the whole thing, so you didn't get the atmosphere, you didn't get the entire uh, understanding of, of what it is that the uh, occupation was about, and ultimately what was it about, that the fucking cops are going to arrest us fucking poor people and not the fucking bankers that are throwing people out of their goddamn homes, that's what the fuck Occupy Louisville is about. It's about e economic inequality. The 99%. The 1%, the 99%. 1% owns it all. The 99% has deadly shit. The working class people, you need to unite. We're all fucking poor. And even if we ain't poor, we're all working paycheck to paycheck. And without that job, you know your shit's gonna fucking collapse. You can't maintain your lifestyle. You know you got a lifestyle. So, Occupy Louisville. Assalamu alaikum, Johnny Tsunami, Jonathan Daniel Masters, Grip Shover, sitting here talking about the revolutions. This article that I had written, um, I had written this a year ago, and I tried to give it to some of the folks that occupy, and I think it's still really good, and it's going to be relevant every election, okay? Every election, um, we are able to do something right before then, because that's when the politicians are paying attention. So, UK stood up when they won a basketball game. Louisville didn't get our chance to actually stand up for something. So let's actually stand up for freedom, justice, democracy. Stand up for uh, balance and having a uh, leveling, okay? Not spread the misery, but spread the wealth. Have some more Robin Hoods. It's the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. That's the way it's always been. That's the way it continues to be. It doesn't stop until we actually stand up, until the poors, as motherfucking Jake Payne likes to call us, the working class himself, the fucking, what, how much money does he make? Is he really doing that great? Maybe he is, I don't know. So, uh, Gatewood, Galbraith knows what it's like to be working class, so knowing that he knows to be working class, he should have been elected more than any of these fucking millionaires that stop electing fucking millionaires. Why the fuck we want millionaires ruling over us? His opponents can't touch Gatewood because Gatewood's an independent. He would be able to unite the Democrats and the Republicans, and independent would be a great president to have. Because, you know, they want to say, well, you won't get nothing passed. You'll get everything passed because you got to work both sides of the aisle. And they'll both look like assholes if they don't work with you. You're an independent. So you didn't uh, say you were either one of the parties. Plus, he has a trillion-dollar revenue plan. Gatewood's uh, marijuana plan would have made Kentucky over a trillion fucking dollars. Over a trillion dollars, okay? At least, at least a trillion dollars. And Gatewood's plan was precise and to the T, just like the tobacco program. There's a quota only. So many farmers can raise it, and those farmers have to pay for it. And that money that they use to pay for it, that tax will go into a general fund. Then the tax that you get for actually selling it at the dispensaries, at the uh, medical dispensaries, or at the, you know, the, I was going to say, the something shops, the head shops, so the head shops will be able to sell it, or the liquor stores, or the, you know, the red light district, the strip clubs. Keep it out of the reach of children, you can have a separate spot for it, and you can make a shitload of money, tax and regulate it. Marijuana's been in Kentucky's blood since day one. It was, you were forced to actually raise it in the colonies. If you were going to survive in Virginia, George Washington said you better be raising your hemp. George Washington raised hemp. Thomas Jefferson was smoking hemp when he wrote the Declaration of Constitution on the hemp paper. So the Declaration of Independence is written on marijuana. Marijuana gives us rope and oil. 
clothing. It's it's stupid. It's stupid to not have. It's really fucking dumb to have marijuana illegal, but it's so fucking extra stupid, fucking double fucking dose, ignorant ass, dumb, ridiculous, stupid ass bullshit to have hemp illegal. Fuck you. You're gonna make hemp illegal. Fuck you. You're a hypocrite. Fuck you. Hemp has been with Kentucky since the very beginning, and still with hemp. Kentucky still got hemp today. Number one cash crop in Kentucky is hemp. Hemp, hemp, hemp. So we're failing in dentist and fitness. <laughs> so not to mention his trillion dollar revenue plans. I mean, how many, how many trillion dollar revenue plans does one have, have to come up with in order to become governor? Does Brashear have a trillion fucking dollar plan? Bashir does not have a trillion dollar revenue plan. Williams didn't have a trillion dollar revenue plan. Gaywood had to sleep in his car at times to pay for child support. He believes his financial troubles do not disqualify him for holding office. In fact, coming from a poor ground, he fucking understands what it's like to be working class. That gives Gaywood a better insight into the problems of the everyday working class person out here. Okay? So... Gaywood is the only candidate who is against mountaintop removal, which is decapitating Appalachia. Meanwhile, the governor and the Senate speaker, probably owned by the coal companies, Williams and Farmer, is overly pro-business, so the Republican opposition to our current administration is just another stooge for corporations and proud of it. The Gatewood rally candidacy is the only one which stands up to the corporations. Our governor stands with the coal company owners and their profits over the health and safety of mine workers, which too just died recently in Western Kentucky at the Armstrong Coal Company's Equality Boot Mine, which is located in Centertown, Ohio County, Kentucky. Ohio County. So this is a year ago. Two people have died there. There's a ton of jobs being lost in Appalachia right now. What are you all going to do in Appalachia? You already got 30% unemployment rate. Now the coal companies are gone. Now what are you going to do? What are you going to do, Appalachia? You're poor. You're voting Republican. They're going to cut food subsidies and your food stamps and your welfare off. What are you going to do without those checks? What are you going to do without that money? You need socialism. Wake up. You need the government involved. Appalachia, come on. All poor people of Kentucky, all poor people everywhere, you need the government to intervene. You need the government to at least provide for food. Seriously. The local folks like Hanshu has the police, the coal companies, and the state regulators in order for the workers to have any security or peace of mind about the proper safety precautions of coal mining. Gatewood Galbraith hates the motherfucking petro, pharmaceutical, military, industrial, transnational, corporate, fascist, elite sons of bitches. Corporate fascist elite sons of bitches. The Petro Pharmaceutical Military Industrial Transnational. You guys are so fucking huge. You're everywhere. You're rich and you got tons of money. Gateway's been railing against corporations since 1983 when he ran for Agricultural Commission. He's been here the whole time. They call him a perennial candidate. Well, he's a, he's for a perpetual revolution. He's a perpetual revolutionary. He's a perennial revolutionary. He was a non-stop revolutionary. Gatewood Gabbard was one of the best things out of Kentucky. The best thing Kentucky's had to offer is Gatewood Gabbard. Gatewood Gabbard was a great man. So, Gatewood's been railing against corporations since he ran for Agricultural Commission. He's been championing the common man for 28 years. I know of no person in Kentucky who spoke truth to power as much as Gatewood has. He's one of a kind. Even George Clooney, Ashley Judd, Johnny Depp are rarely caught dead in native Kentucky. We've seen Ashley Judd here and there. But George Clooney and Johnny Depp, where the fuck are y'all? Y'all never fucking come to Kentucky. Fucking dicks. Gatewood is in favor of the Second Amendment, which is the best safeguard for abolished politics to protect themselves from an oppressive 1984 Big Brother government. Since Gatewood Farrell favors the legalization of marijuana, he has been unfairly stigmatized since Rand Paul's for marijuana, or what he calls Aqua Buddha. Don't ever forget that, our senator. <laughs> uh, Rand Paul, Kentucky senator, is a big pothead. He made this woman uh, get down on her knees or some shit for some fucking weird college prank and made her pray to Aqua Buddha. So his god is Aqua Buddha. His god is weed. His god is marijuana. Rand Paul loves himself some weed. He's a doctor, and I'm sure he knows the health benefits and or detractions that weed has, whether it actually cures cancer or not. I guarantee you he's mini Ron Paul. He's a 
But we're guessing. He's like a blank slate, right? We can only guess if he's against the war on drugs. But he did say the federal solution is not winning. So the federal solution is not winning. The war on drugs is not winning. That's how. That's his take on the war on drugs and how sneaky. It wasn't like he says I'm for legalization of marijuana. That's not what Rand Paul says. Rand Paul's also against the Patriot Act, and he hates the uh, TSA, uh, the airport scanners. He got uh, actually arrested for not allowing them to search him, and he's a senator, so he's like, shit, isn't there a freaking flyer pass? I've been going through this shit the whole fucking time. It's bullshit. I'm tired of it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Gatewood would have been on the right side. It would have gone from rich to uh, the poorest. Uh, Robin Leach would have had to start up another lifestyle as rich and famous because all fucking Kentuckians would have been so fucking rich, just wealthy, just wealth coming out our ears for the post-Gatewoods win for the governorship. Marijuana cures asthma and cancer. Kentucky is number one for cancer and marijuana cures it. All use is medical. Marijuana is the number one stress reliever on earth. Gay Wood wants to sue the pharmaceutical companies in order to fund drug treatment programs with the tax on marijuana. Kentucky would have more money for public works projects, education to cover up the massive budget shortfall, which Kentucky is inevitably going to face for many years to come, because we're not going to have Obama bucks anymore, and we did, so I predicted that right. We always have a shortfall. Every fucking time, every fucking year, Kentucky Frankfurt has a budget shortfall. Uh, the cover of the massive budget shortfall which Kentucky is inevitably going to face in the years to come. Look at the U.S. government to continuously to bail us out, slowly selling all of our state sovereignty to the feds, selling all of our gold. Is there any gold in Fort Knox? Probably not. There ain't no gold in Fort Knox, Kentucky. They stole your fucking gold and you don't even fucking know about it. Education Gatewood said he would have given us $5,000 vouchers to young Kentuckians who want to go to college. Gatewood wants to buy every eighth grader in Kentucky a laptop computer. <laughs> Every 8th grader, free laptop. Gatewood would have given you a free laptop. That would have spurred so much growth and creativity in this. Man, we should be a technological society. We should be leading the cultural revolution and the technological revolution. Come on, Kentucky. We could do better than this. Yeah, we got a bad legacy. Yeah, we got some bad shit that happened. Yeah, there's a lot of dumb fucking hillbillies that are fucking racist and this fucking bullshit. All that shit is true. There's toothless and there's meth heads and there's, you know... People who don't vote and don't understand civics and people are mean and there's violence and drunkenness and lots of overdose and lots of pill heads, lots of pill billies. We got lots of issues. Yes, this is true. This is true. That's why we need good people to stand up. We need good people. We need more working class people organizing themselves and talk some, talking amongst themselves, organizing themselves in the groups and having solidarity amongst them. And from that democratic spirit is when we'll actually be able to break free of all of it. We're creating Occupy as democracy. We're creating a new world because we are acting upon democracy. We're getting in groups and we're creating working groups and we're making decisions based on the groups and we're acting upon those decisions. That's how democracy works. So, Gaywood wanted to save a million dollars uh, by employee state workers on projects rather than use in personal service. David Williams, he wants to cut kindergarten. <laughs> David Williams is against kindergarten. Fuck you, David Williams. Kindergarten is spe uh, specifically touching to me since I'm a German-American, since we come from the German-speaking lands of Bavaria and Prussia. Maximilian de Moscow is Bohemian, and we also came out of Austria. We come from the German lands, the grip servers. So being a grip server, being an American, being a Kentuckian, being from Sanfordtown, being from Kentucky, Germans brought every fucking thing that education has from the universities down to the high schools to the common schools to kindergarten. You want to cut kindergarten? Fuck you, David Williams. God, you're such a dickhead. And fucking Richie Farmer, you got audited because you're a fucking bitch. And everybody can tell that you were just fucking doting and smiling like a little fucking bitch on fucking David Williams. It shows how fucking like a little lap dog you were, how puppy fied you are. You just follow whatever the hell David Williams told you to, wherever he said to go. Gateway believes that Kentucky could save a billion dollars. We already said this by employing state workers on projects instead of using personal service contracts. So he wants to use state workers instead of personal service contracts. These fucking independent corporations are making money off the Kentucky's taxpayer dime. You can save a billion dollars just by hiring the state workers. David Williams says the Louisville Bridge won't come in for another year. These people have had the money, they've had the resource, and they failed us all. Gatewood says about Mitch McConnell, he's an alien, he's not a conservative. <laughs> 
No, he's not even conservative. He's a fucking alien. That's what Gatewood says about Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell's a fucking alien. Gatewood said that they've never met a bloated police state they didn't like. He's against the police state. He's against the Patriot Act. He is Rand Paul. The only difference between Gatewood and Rand Paul is that Gatewood told us the fucking truth. Rand Paul bullshitted us, and that's who we fucking elect. We only elect the bullshitters, people who don't tell us the fucking truth, and that's got to change. You hear somebody telling you the truth, you recognize it and you value it. You might not agree with them, but they make you think. And we need more people to make us think. And if they're the only ones making us think, then you got to vote for them. I'm glad Rand Paul is our senator. Fuck Mitch McConnell. Occupy Louisville. Occupy. Viva la revolution.